Well, hey church, I want to welcome you to Devotions. And uh, I have the honor of joining you for the next week, the next seven days. And hopefully you can tune in every day to be a part of our conversation as we look at leaning into the new year and really just being able to share a thought with you from scripture about something that I believe is really, really important. Let me just say Happy New Year. I know it's only New Year's Eve, but we're nearly there, aren't we? We're nearly there. We're nearly in 2024. And I think that if we are still alive at the end of 2023, that means God must have a plan for all of our lives in 2024. And let's believe together that's a great plan. We know it is a great plan because God is a good God. And Psalm 119 says, God, you are good and you do good. So welcome to a new year. 2023 is almost over. Never to be had again. No other generation, no other person will get to see it. But we did. We lived through it. And 2024 is here. I want to talk to you for the next seven days on the subject, Here Comes the Dreamer. Here Comes the Dreamer. I remember being in primary school and every year my mum and dad would come back from our parent-teacher interviews laughing because the same thing would be said at every parent-teacher interview for me and that was this, Glenn is a daydreamer. And I would always be told off in school for daydreaming. They'd say, Glenn, stop daydreaming. Maybe that was said about you or your children as well, stop daydreaming. And I think it's a really unfortunate turn of phrase. It's a shame that we use the phrase stop daydreaming because dreaming is actually what we were meant to do. Now, while I understand that my teachers in school were saying, Glenn, don't be distracted, we're meant to dream. Genesis chapter 37, 1 to 5. Let me read it to you. Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks of his brothers, the sons of Bilah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about him. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, They hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. We read on a little bit into chapter 37, verses 18 and 19. The brothers saw him in the distance. And before he, that's Joseph, reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer they said to each other. Here comes that dreamer. This whole account really starts off with this whole idea that Joseph had a dream. And the reality is this, friends, is everything starts with a dream. The job that you have started with the dream that maybe you had that one day you would have a job. You would be able to pay bills. You'd be able to save money. You'd be able to so into, into the kingdom of God. You had a dream that you would one day have a job. And of course, the job that you're in, somebody had a dream to create that business, to create that institution that you work in. Or maybe you're self-employed. Maybe you started your business. Remember, it all started with a dream. One of my favorite quotes about dreaming is by T.E. Lawrence. He said this, All people dream, but not equally. Those who dream by night in the dusty recesses of their minds awake to the day to find it was all vanity. But dreamers of the day are dangerous, for the many act out their dreams with eyes wide open to make it possible. When we dream with our eyes wide open, we actually have something to live for, a sense of divine purpose. Now, let me say this about you. Your life began with a dream in the heart of God. God dreamt about humankind. God dreamt about you. You were created in your mother's womb, the Bible says, by God. You are the fulfillment of God's dream. And the reality is this, is that at an early age, every single one of us dreamed. We dreamed of all sorts of things, didn't we? 
We used to say things like, let's pretend. We would start games with the phrase, let's pretend. And what we would do is we would step into an imaginary world and we would dream that we were knights, astronauts, princesses, um, professional skateboarders, whatever it may be, professional sportsmen and women. We started with a dream. And I think it's really unfortunate that the older we get, we can begin to lose sight of our dreams. And too often what we do is this, we begin to label dreams as a fairy tale. But I want to remind you, church, coming into 2024, that dreaming is your birthright. It's your inheritance. It is your duty to humankind to actually dream, to have a dream that you can begin to live out in your life. Joseph's story that we're going to track for the next few days is also our story. It's the journey of dream inception to dream fulfillment. And it's fraught with ups and downs, ins, outs, middles. But when you keep your eye on the prize, it is amazing what can be accomplished when you set out on a dream. Victor Hugo, the author of Les Miserables, he said this, he said, each man and woman should frame their life that at some future hour, fact and dreaming collide. And my prayer for you for 2024 is that this will be a year where dreaming and fact collide. May it truly be a year where your friends, your family, your neighbors, your work colleagues begin to say about you, here comes the dreamer. Not because of saying some vain notion of a dream that you have, but because you are actually living out the dreams that God birthed in your heart. And I want to take a moment to pray for you before we close. I want to pray into the dream that is you're carrying maybe a dream, maybe a dream that you're not even yet aware of, but it's a dream that I believe God wants to give to you so that you can truly live out God's divine plans for life. Take a moment to pray with me. Father, I pray for all of our audacious church family. Thank you for them. Lord, with so many types of people to pray for, people who've not yet got a dream, or for those who've given up on their dream, those who've been disappointed by the dream, or even those who are living out their dream. Father, I pray that in this new season of life, as we come into 2024, may this truly be a year of dreaming with you. Lord, we want to dream with our eyes wide open to see the life that you have for us, for our family, for our friends, and for our church. And Lord, if there's anybody here right now who feels like they've given up on their dream, just seemed so impossible. Lord, I pray that in this new year, would you again put a spring in their step, give them faith to believe once again. Lord, your word says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. And God, we all know what it's like to live with the frustration of dreams not yet having come to pass. But I pray, Lord, for people who are saddened right now by a lack of dreaming coming to pass, Lord, would you encourage them, use these next few days of devotions to stir their hearts to believe and dream again. God, what a fantastic opportunity this is for us to be reminded that the God of heaven and earth has dreams for our life. And I pray you would help us in this new season to engage in those dreams with fervor, with vigor, with passion, courage, and determination. Thank you for our church. And as we say goodbye to 2023, and as we say hello, 2024, may it truly be a year of great dreaming, I pray in Jesus' name. Once again, Happy New Year, church. I'll see you tomorrow. Much love.